my name is Nancy Wallace. I am a student services librarian and also the library diversity fellow here at UC Davis. Um, I am here to talk about some books that um, I enjoyed and that um, are important to me as part of the LGBTQ plus history month. So um, I want to start with um, this book called And the Band Played On. Um, it's by uh, journalist Randy Filtz, and it chronicles the early years of the AIDS crisis, starting in the late 70s and going through the mid 80s. Um, this book is um, important to me because it's centered around the time that I first became aware of the fact that um, gay people existed. And like uh, many people from my generation, um, that was during the AIDS crisis uh, in the context of a pandemic. Um, the book talks a lot about uh, sort of the history of the, uh, the, the disease when it was first discovered. It was initially referred to as GRID, which was uh, stood for Gay Related Immune Deficiency. And it was only later that they changed the name to Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. Um, the book talks a lot about how uh, no one was really sure how to respond to the pandemic, especially because it seemed to primarily affect uh, populations like um, gay, m uh, gay men and also Haitian immigrants as well as intravenous drug users. So it was all people that were deemed um, not important or expendable at the time by both the medical and the political establishment. Um, another reason that I chose this book was because um, one of the people who figures uh, prominently in the story of the uh, AIDS crisis in the US is uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci. And um, I thought it was really interesting how he, some of the things that he said and some of the things that he learned about how science is communicated um, uh, came up again in uh, the current pandemic, uh, in terms, especially in terms of how science is reported in the media um, in ways that often loses a lot of the nuance and the fact that science is about asking questions and um, not necessarily always having the uh, perfect answer all of the time. So I think there are some lessons to be learned from the previous pandemic that apply to this one. So uh, if you are at all interested in um, gay history and also in the history of the AIDS epidemic and how science responded and how the political establishment responded, I would definitely recommend this book. Okay, the next um, material I actually want to talk about is a movie. Um, this is a documentary called Before Stonewall. So when I um, first came out in um, 1986 to my mother, um, as I said before, uh, mostly what, we, what people in the mainstream consciousness knew about um, gay people was AIDS. Um, and so I started looking for more information and happily I found this documentary on, which was shown on PBS, on my local PBS station in Chicago. Um, and this talks about uh, gay activism in the U.S. starting in the 1920s. Um, and it's a really fascinating look of, at what people did, how people found community. Um, both um, within, within the community and also um, in terms of reaching out to other people and taking inspiration from other liberation movements that were happening um, during the um, early part of the 1960s. Um, one of the things that I really liked about this particular, um, this particular documentary is that it features some previously unseen footage from uh, people like Audre Lorde and Allen Ginsberg. And so these are um, people who were very influential in the community talking about what it was like before Stonewall, uh, before 1969 when um, 
it was even more, um, there were even fewer legal protections for people who were not heterosexual uh, than there are today. So um, I highly recommend this. It's a fascinating look at, um, and it really does show that um, while things may not have changed as much as we would like, they've still changed a lot. So this next book is called Fun Home, a family tragic comic, and it's by cartoonist Alison Bechtel. You may have heard of the Bechtel test, which is uh, a theory that, uh, uh, sort of a way that she devised to look at movies in particular and media in terms of how often the female characters talk to each other about something other than men. Um, and that's very much in keeping with sort of her, her work. Um, for 25 years, she wrote a, and illustrated a comic called Dykes to Watch Out For that was about uh, lesbians in, um, it was never clear exactly where they were, but mostly in the, it sounds like they were in the Northeast. Um, and it involved people who were lawyers and stay-at-home moms and academics. And um, it, was, it was huge in the 90s. Um, for me, it was one of the first places that I saw depictions of lesbians who looked like me um, because she had characters who were fat, who were uh, black and brown, and who were bisexual and non-binary. So um, there was a lot there. Was a lot there. Um, and when she published her autobiography, she did it in the form of a graphic novel. And you can see some of her fabulous art. 